approach to see if we could help Dave and Barbara with their new home. It was an immediate yes. Being part of the community is stitched into Taubman's DNA and we'll do what we can where we can to help. Dave and Barbara have fostered 400 children in the last 27 years, so we obviously needed a really robust product. We used Torbins Endure, which is a water-based, low VOC product that has been approved by the National Asthma Council of Australia's Sensitive Choice Program. by Australia. Now you can easily bring your projects to life with Dulux BIM Solutions. Dulux BIM Solutions provides easy to use BIM content, so you can add Dulux colours and product ranges to your Revit and ArchiCAD models quickly and simply. The latest Dulux BIM content update now includes the Dulux World of Colour and product ranges from Dulux Powder Coatings, Dulux Protective Coatings, Dulux Acrotex, Dulux Avista and Intergrain Timber Finishes. Dulux BIM Solutions, inspiring creativity. An award-winning Tasmanian winery has rethought the Salador experience with the aid of a carbon neutral brick. The material palette was selected to respond to the way that Lou and Joe make their wine, which they're all about being as natural and being as authentic as possible. When we were picking materials, we wanted that and a response to the Tasmanian context and a way to sort of ground a small building in the landscape.
Aesthetic. Ergonomic. Flexible. Durable. Supporting the finest design. The Modex system of modular handrails is guaranteed to be fit for purpose compliant. Time after time after time. The 2023 National Architecture Awards are proudly supported by the Australian Institute of Architects National Corporate Partners. Talkmans, Alspec, Blue Scope, Lysart, Fielders, Dulux, Brickworks, Bondorma Techno, Smeg, Planned Cover, Architecture Media and the Image Makers Association. For over 40 years, the Australian Institute of Architects has upheld excellence across the profession. The Institute recognises and celebrates all efforts of our members, projects and teams in shaping communities through inspirational architecture across Australia and overseas. Welcome to the 2023 National Architecture Awards. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2023 National Architecture Awards. I'm Dan Borscher from the ABC, and I'm really thrilled to be your master of ceremonies tonight for this very special awards and celebration, at really culminating three incredible days of big discussions about where we are right now and where we're going to the future. I want to begin by acknowledging the Ngunnawal traditional owners, and it's my great pleasure to welcome up Ani Violet Sheridan to welcome us to her country. Please make her welcome. Thank you, Dan, and it is my pleasure to be here and welcome you to the land of the Ngunnawal people. This is my mother's country. My father was a Wiradjuri man, and, but I follow my mother's bloodline. And it is a pleasure to be here to the 2023 Architects Awards. And I congratulate all the winners, but I also congratulate all the nominees as well, because it's in, most important that um, you're all recognised for what you do. Architect is, when you look at buildings and you look at some... I just got back from overseas, and guess where I went? I couldn't help myself. I had to do it. And that's what my husband said, you just had to do it. I went to Trump Tower. <laughs> and I just had to wear my Uluru Statement of the Heart T-shirt. <laughs> and guess what else I did? I had coffee and a slice of cake and it was yummy. But the architect, <laughs> that building, it must have cost him a fortune, all that marble. I tell you what, one thing I can say is a very good businessman, very smart, I'm not so sure about now, but I was happy that I went there because I can tell my grannies. I've got 28 grandchildren and another one due next year. So I can tell my grannies, guess where I was? I went to Trump Tower. The older ones were saying, oh, OK, Nan. But... I believe a welcome to country is a traditional Aboriginal blessing, symbolising the traditional owners of the land welcome you. But it also shows respect for the first peoples of the land you are meeting on. It's a little bit about not going to someone else's house or home unless you were invited or welcomed. The reason for this custom is to protect your spirit while you are on our land. I am a proud Ngunnawal woman as I carry my ancestors in spirit, walking into the future, teaching the next generations about the oldest culture in the world, my culture, the Aboriginal culture. I'd like to pay my respects to my elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to any First Nations people here this evening as well. 
but I'd also like to acknowledge all the non-Indigenous people here as well. And I only say this in Canberra. In keeping in the general spirit of friendship and reconciliation, it gives me great pleasure once again to welcome you to the land of the Ngunnawal people. And that young man that was playing the didgeridoo, that's one of my grannies, that's Kane. And on behalf of Kane, myself, my family and the other Ngunnawal families, I say welcome. But you, you, for all the visitors that come here, and oh, well, this might be your first time, you do know you're in the best city in Australia. Because <laughs> this is the only place I reckon that have kangaroos jumps up the main street. But, I'm, you know, I'm, bit, I'm a bit sad as well because we didn't get the referendum up. I was a big supporter of the yes vote. But my biggest concern now... But we've been here for 65,000 years. I won't be here for another 65,000 years. I've probably gone off with the fair, with the, in the dream time. But I have a concern with my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, Archie, Ali, and the other grannies have a voice. But you know what? We will survive. And we're the only country, only city in Australia that voted yes. I have a little nephew. <laughs> I have a little nephew, my nephew that I've had since he was two. He's 10 now, going on 22. Let me tell you. We, he's a, he must have been eavesdropping when we were talking about the voice and about the vote. And he says... Arnie, you know what? I reckon Canberra people are the most brainiest people in Australia. You know what? I'm starting to think it's right. Thank you all so much. God bless. Have a great night. Thank you so much, Arnie Violet, for, for that warm welcome uh, and your kind words and generosity in bringing your culture and sharing it with all of us. I want to uh, acknowledge other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are here today. And we're gathered this evening at the National Gallery of Australia, and I extend a warm welcome to everyone who's here with us tonight and everyone who's watching wherever they are on the live stream as well. And I also take this opportunity to thank the Institute's national corporate partners for their ongoing support of the Institute and the National Awards Program. Blue Scope, Torbmans, Smeg, Dual Lux, Allspec, Brickworks, Bondom, Matecno, Lysart, Fielders, Modex, Plant Cover, Architecture, Media and the Image Makers Association. Please give them all a round of applause. And a special mention to a few of our esteemed guests we have amongst us in the room this evening. Elizabeth Watson-Brown, member of the Australian Greens, good to have you along. A chapter president of the United Architects of the Philippines, Mr Romeo Vergara. Professor Kandika Shabir Ahmed, President of the Institute of Architects from Bangladesh, as well as past National Presidents of the Institute, Shannon Batterson, who will be hearing from shortly, Clark, Claire Cousins, Ken Ma, Carrie Ker uh, Lyon and Jonathan Clements and Carl Fender as well. Please give them all a round of applause. <laughs> And this is the boring bit, but it's the only boring bit of the night, I promise. This is the housekeeping rules. Uh, the bathrooms are located directly outside those golden doors and just down the hallway. The National Gallery is, is smoke-free. For those who intend to smoke, please make your way outside the glass doors, past the grey gate on the left and into the staff car park. This also includes the use of vapours, and if that's not incentive enough to give up, then I'm not sure what would be. In the event that we need to evacuate the venue, please depart via the glass doors and follow staff directions towards the lake. Uh, the urns on the stage are actually pieces of art, so please don't touch these or put your drinks on the plinths. And speaking of dr drinks, uh, when you've finished yours, please don't put your glass under your chair where it might get broken. There are golden trays along the side if you can put your glasses in there because obviously uh, this is a very important building and we don't want damage done to the floors. If you have, uh, and also on that note, uh, we are getting started so if you haven't filled up your drink, well, too late now. <laughs> There is water on your chair, though, uh, if you get thirsty. If you have any other questions, please see one of the amazing NGA staff who are here. Now, let's get the evening underway with the first announcement of the night. The 2023 National Emerging Architect Prize, proudly supported by Blue Scope. Please welcome to the stage the Institute's National President, Stuart Tanner.
Hello. What a beautiful gathering. And thank you, Artie Sheridan. That was just so authentic and wonderful. So beautiful way to start the evening. Um, it's actually very meaningful for me to, to present the Emerging Architect uh, Prize this evening because when I became the State President in Tasmania, one of the things I wanted to do was throw myself into the emerging group and, and really understand where they were at and create a really warm relationship and, and allow them to understand that it doesn't matter at what stage your career is, everyone in the profession should be accessible. And, you know, I created some beautiful relationships, really fabulous relationships that have been ongoing. Um, that has continued into the national presidency role, which is really lovely. Um, for example, earlier this year I was in Denmark and I caught up with Katrin Vant, who was the former uh, Tasmanian uh, emerging president. And so it was the, these relationships are going to be ongoing for a very long time. And we even have a former national uh, emerging architect um, President Tiffany Liu on the um, Institute board. So that's just wonderful. And it just shows that um, the, the, the power and the potency of, of that demographic coming up and making their voice heard. And one of the most enriching things I've learned from being involved with Imagine is the capacity for us to mentor a, a, um, each way through intellectual and meaningful exchange. And that power of the reciprocal learning and listening is something that binds us and it allows us to elevate ourselves through that meshed sharing of knowledge and experience. And I think that's really, really important. Um, for example, my, my great late friend Nick Merkett, when I was going to lunch with him one day, we were just sort of wandering along and, uh, and he said, where would we be without our students and graduates? And the great Lakota North American indigenous elder, Black Elk, once said, our thoughts should rise as high as the eagle soars. And that's a beautiful concept because I think as professionals, it's absolutely imperative that we retain right through our careers that capacity to, to think and feel in a high concept and forward thinking manner. And that includes the determination to observe the past, preserve our fabric, and enlighten each other as to why it's critical to do so. And with crusading efforts in heritage retention, leadership in gender equity and inclusivity, and professional recognition as a design leader, this year's National Emerging Architect is a beacon of tenacity and commitment to our profession. And so it gives me great pleasure to say that the 2023 National Emerging Architect Prize winner is awarded to Ben Peak. Ben Peake has been awarded the 2023 Australian Institute of Architects National Emerging Architect Prize. Peake's impact on the practice of Carter Williamson Architects, where he is the design director, has been profound. He has been instrumental in steering award-winning projects, nurturing young architects and advocating for gender and diversity equity. Peak's leadership style encompasses design excellence alongside a profound sense of social responsibility, demonstrating architectural practice as citizenship. He has not only shaped projects, but also embraced the ethical dimensions of architecture. The jury commends his accomplishments and eagerly anticipates his future contributions. Um, wow, this is huge. I don't think I've ever had my heart beat so much as right now. So uh, thank you so much. Um, I just want to start by congratulating all the other state emerging architects. Um, I've met them, some of them, this evening and just really inspired by the amazing work and efforts that we're all doing around the country. Um, anyone who's met me will know the story that I sort of came to architecture a little bit later. I had a few years working in IT um, and it was a big and scary move for me, but the one that was really supported by my partner Matt, um, my friends and my family. So I'd like to thank them for getting me through those long hours at architecture school. Um, it, I've never looked back though since coming to architecture and I feel like I've been very lucky and had a very great experience through the generosity of the profession, um, which I think is something that's really important. And one of the greatest privileges I've had was getting to know and stand by the residents of Sirius and Millers Point and The Rocks 
as they were fighting for their homes. Um, you know, some we didn't quite get there in the end, but uh, to stand next to legends like Maya Dimitrio, who wasn't scared of the government, who let us take a thousand people through her home so we could raise funds to take them to court and challenge what they were doing, um, is something that's going to stay with me forever. And um, I'd also just like to say that uh, it wouldn't all be possible without everyone at Carter Williamson Architects, particularly Sean Carter. And the team there, I think, have really created a, a wonderful work culture uh, and a place that I'm happy to go to every day and work. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Ben, and, and thanks very much, Stuart, for making that announcement. Well, tonight's the culmination of the Australian Institute of Architects 2023 awards program of the nine chapter awards programs held in June and July. All of the award and named award winning projects were eligible for consideration by the national jury. Chaired by the Institute's immediate past national president, Shannon Batterson, the jury included Shanine Fanton, director of people orientated design, William Smart, owner and creative director of Smart Design. Studio. Stephanie Kittingan, architect and director of placement studio, and Scott Burchell, director of comb construction. Please give them all a round of applause. From the field of 178 entries, the jury shortlisted some 80, and we'll see the, those in the nominee roles across this evening. To be shortlisted for a National Architecture Award in itself is a high honour indeed, so congratulations to all uh, the practices in the running this evening, and good luck. And to give us a sense of the task the jury faced this year, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage 2023 National Jury Chair, Shannon Patterson. All right, who's sick of hearing from me at the moment? <laughs> um, a huge thank you, Dan. It is such a pleasure to be gathered here tonight with you all after what has been a really monumentally huge few days of architects, architecture, and I hope a little bit of fun in this beautiful place that I'm very grateful to call home. Tonight is such a happy chance to end the conference with a celebration of the remarkable work being done around the country by members, and I congratulate everyone on their shortlisted projects. They were a real joy to experience. Finishing your term as National President with the opportunity to chair the National Awards Jury has become more than just a time-honoured tradition. The National Awards Jury is a highly treasured invitation for a small group to consider all the projects that were chosen within their respective chapter programs under a national lens. This task and the responsibility it carries wraps up the often all-encompassing time as national president with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to experience the work of our peers. Work, oh God, work, I'm suddenly remembering asking for that, work that is shared with pride, passion and remarkable generosity. I was joined on the 2023 national jury by Shanine, William, Stephanie and Scott. We were supported by the energizer bunny that is Abby, and of course Rob here in Canberra. I am indebted to them for all. I'm indebted to them all for the generosity with which they gave their time, expertise across different areas of the profession, their good humour, and now their friendship. It's funny to think that when we first gathered for shortlisting deliberation in Melbourne, we were actually all meeting for the first time. Now, just a few short months later, we have journeyed across Australia together covering approximately 18,000 kilometres, with 14 flights, one in a horrifically small aircraft, seven Kia Carnivals and one really bad Hyundai Staria. When they tried to give us a second Hyundai Staria, we went, can we have a Kia, please? Like, you, we just can't do it again. The days started with the sun and ended well after dark and were full of architecture, impassioned debate, opinions on each other's taste in music, regular oversharing, usually by me, laughter, and even the impetus to face some of our greatest fears, also me. The jury tour is as much about visiting projects as it is meeting and hearing from the architects and the clients who brought the work to life. From the smallest of works to the biggest, it was remarkable to hear the story behind each project unfold. The strongest themes presenting were that of collaboration, sustainability, both social and environmental, and of an overwhelming respect for the built environment. Creativity can shine strong in the most humble of sheds, and a safe space for an outpouring of souls can be created on a busy street corner. 
the ingenuity and imagination displayed in exploring how we create place with our work has been inspiring, to say the least. Above all else, though, I will forever be left with a lasting impression of the people behind the built environment, people and work that can so easily be taken for granted by those that inhabit the buildings we craft. As a profession and an organisation, I hope that we continue to lean into the great strength to be found in celebrating our diversity. Our varied voices, stories and cultures build a stronger profession and one that is better equipped to build towns and cities that support our lives and the planet. Over the two weeks that we travelled this beautiful country, we heard stories of big practices and small, of highly urban environments and those of the regions. I was buoyed to hear recurring stories of social conscience and sustainability. Most of all, I was heartened to witness the increasing work to listen to and care for country. Efforts to listen to our First Nations voice is core to the way we work now at the Institute, and we were so pleased to see this reflected in the projects that we visited across the country. Now, before we get to the rest of the evening, I would like to share some words on the recent referendum to establish a First Nations voice, which has highlighted the challenges that we collectively face on the journey towards reconciliation. Despite the outcome, it showed that almost 40% of Australians do want the views of Indigenous people heard and counted in relation to matters that affect them. So it is now more important than ever that we come together to determine the path forward. The Australian Institute of Architects remains committed to reconciliation and the generous invitation made by the Uluru Statement from the Heart to all Australians and its call for voice, treaty and truth will continue to guide our organisation's strategies and planning. Working together, we can change outcomes for Indigenous Australians through our support of the profession and alignment of our policy, advocacy and education approaches with First Nations values and priorities. The Institute is committed to supporting our First Nations staff and members, and we are prioritising the work of the Voice to the Institute, the First Nations Advisory Committee, as part of our steadfast commitment to reconciliation. We have much to learn, and we are committed to working together to shape a better future. So. So, now to the main event. I'm actually going to start things off. God, I'm going to get emotional. Sorry. I managed through th three days. I haven't done this yet. For those of you who know me, that is an epic feat. <laughs> Can cry in public. Um, I'm going to start things off tonight with what might be a bit of a surprise announcement. As you would all know, the gold medal is the highest honour the Institute can bestow. And this year's winner is the unstoppable Kirsten Thompson. I hope you all got to enjoy her incredible tour. I certainly loved it. The national jury actually got to see it together when we were in Sydney. This evening, I wanted to take a moment to make a gold medal announcement that has occurred in a somewhat unusual manner. Architecture is the result of intense collaboration. Collaboration between client, architect and builder. Often, architecture is also the result of collaboration between designers, as is the case with many highly regarded architectural practices around the world. In 2003, the gold medal was awarded to Melbourne architect Peter Corrigan. The medal honoured three decades of contribution to architectural practice. The citation opened with a note from Corrigan acknowledging the enormous contribution to the work by his partner in both life and practice, Maggie, Maggie Edmund. 20 years later, the 2023 gold medal jury were asked to consider whether there had been an oversight in the acknowledging of only one member of the duo whose long-standing collaboration created the distinguished firm Edwin and Corrigan. The jury was undivided in its conclusion that the work celebrated in the 2003 gold medal was that of the team. And so it is with great pleasure that I announce the 2003 gold medal the event.
20 years ago in 2003, my late husband and partner was awarded the Institute's gold medal. In his A.S. Hook address, he reflected on a prediction that by 2020, barely 20% 20 of people in their early 30s would own their own home, and that banks and credit cards, our leisure society, and lust for instant gratification would achieve what the politicians could not legislate, the death of the Australian dream of home ownership. He also said, my partner Maggie Edmund should be recognised and publicly thanked. There is a great deal of prurient curiosity surrounding our partnership. It is really nobody's business. <laughs> that same year, a very memorable year for our practice, the Chapel of St. Joseph in Surrey Hills in Victoria won the inaugural Enduring Architecture Award. Recently, the Victorian chapter bestowed on me the naming rights to the Enduring Architecture Award in Victoria, for which I was thrilled and honoured. But nothing prepared me for the recognition I am receiving tonight. It is both humbling and restorative to have Edmund and Corrigan's 50-year journey of a life in architecture together finally recognised by the Australian Institute of Architects. It resonates for me like a noble peace prize. <laughs> Thank you to the National Council and the Victorian Chapter Council and the 2023 jury. With special thanks to Shannon Batterson, Vanessa Bird, and Professor Philip Goad, who together with Cameron Braun ambushed me with the news of the award at Gerald's Bar in Carlton North. <laughs> Thank you also to all the colleagues, staff, and students over the years who have participated in the projects designed by Edmund and Corrigan. Congratulations also to Kirsten Thompson, the gold medalist for 2023, whose work and commitment to the profession of architecture I have long admired. Thank you for this gold medal recognition to Edmund and Corrigan Architects. Two pieces of stone have sat side by side on our mantelpiece for many years. A symbolic tribute from a close friend on the occasion of our marriage. One is rough and unpolished, the other honed and smooth. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon, for that very special announcement. And if I can just add to the congratulations, Maggie, and I want to go off script for a moment. It's an unexpected thing when we look to the past to understand the present and the future. It's a rarer thing when we reckon with that and we correct the record. And so I want to add my congratulations. You used the term restorative, and I couldn't think of a better term. Congratulations again. <laughs> And we spoke with Kirsten Thompson earlier, who is here, and if you might just stand up for the, for the moment. The 2023 gold medalist, and, and Kirsten was absolutely thrilled to hear that the jury had made this decision, and I just thought it was important that we acknowledge you in this special place. Please, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll continue with the proceedings. Shannon, well, you're already staying, so that's, that's great. Now, we, we have two stages tonight, so I'll run through the logistics on how the presentation will run. This is going to be a fun bit. If you receive a national commendation this evening, please enjoy the applause from your seat. Your certificate will be available for the collection when the announcements conclude. 
If you receive a national award, please make your way to the other stage where Shannon's standing where the video, while the video citation is playing to collect your certificate and then head back to your seat. And if you receive the national award, named award this evening, the highest honour in each category, please come up to the other stage as the citation is playing to collect your certificate and we'd like to invite you to say a few words at the lectern. <laughs> And by that, I do mean a few words. We have a lot of awards. You heard how far they travelled. We've got a lot to get, a lot of ground to cover. We only have about a minute or so per person. You don't want me to have to kind of lurk if you go over the time, because we've got a lot to get through. And a note for everyone that commendations, awards and named award winners that will not be taking photos on stage tonight, but our incredible photographer will be over at the media wall, which is uh, the far back end of the room. And we invite you and your teams to head over once the formalities are over. With us through that, let's get started with the announcements with the first category, Heritage. Here are the six projects shortlisted by the National Jury. Thomas Dixon Centre by Conrad Gargert. The Estate by Luke Maloney Architecture. Parliament Square by Design 5 Architects, FJC Studio, JPDC and Years, Months, Days. Sydney Opera House Concert Hall Renewal by ARM Architecture. University of Melbourne Student Precinct by Lyons with Koning, Eisenberg Architecture. NMBW Architecture Studio, Greenaway Architects, Architects Eat, Aspect Studios and Glass Urban. And Bondi Pavilion Restoration and Conservation by Tonkin Zuleika Greer. We're kicking off the first category with three announcements. A national commendation for heritage is awarded to Thomas Dixon Centre by Conrad Gargett. Congratulations, Conrad Gargett. A national award for heritage goes to University of Melbourne Student Precinct by Lions with Koenig Eisenberg Architecture, NNBW Architecture Studio, Greenway Architects, Architects Eat, Aspect Studio and Glass Urban. Thank you. The University of Melbourne Student Precinct, with its array of heritage elements, has been transformed into a bubbling hub catering for its transient student community. Each incision into the heritage fabric is highly considered in application, yet monumental in consequence. Each expression breathes new life into the precinct, bringing together its rich history and reconnecting it to a unique story of country. Congratulations Lions with Koning Eisenberg Architecture, NBMW Architecture Studio, Greenaway Architects, Architects Eat, Aspect Studios and Glass Urban. Congratulations again. And the highest honour in this category, the Lachlan Macquarie Award for Heritage, is awarded to Sydney Opera House Concert Hall Renewal by ARM Architecture. In its 50th anniversary year, the Sydney Opera House is arguably one of Australia's most recognisable pieces of architecture and our only modern building on the UNESCO World Heritage List. ARM Architecture has completed this seminal work with a confident and considered hand. The combination of painstakingly recrafted timbers and new fuchsia colouring, which nod to the original interiors designed by Peter Hall, is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Every detail, from the user journey to instrument movement and acoustic performance, has been investigated at length and the final result is a piece of architecture that the country can be proud to call our own. This is truly a space worthy of international recognition. Congratulations, ARM Architecture. Thank you. Uh, obviously, this is an incredible honour. Uh, congratulations to the other shortlisted entries as well. This was a seven-year uh, journey for us, uh, which, funnily enough, sort of mirrored the journey that Peter Hall uh, had seven years uh, once Utsun had left. Uh, and it's a building that, you know, extra extracts its pound of flesh. It's, uh, it was one that, you know, we sort of certainly had a lot of uh, rigour applied to and, uh, you know, a struggle to get, to get through it. But I wanted to thank our incredible team at ARM, uh, our incredible consultant team. The Opera House themselves were incredibly supportive. 
Uh, and thank you also to the jury for, for recognising the work. So thank you. Congratulations indeed to the ARM architecture team. Well, our next category is the sustainable architecture category, and there are five projects in the running. Let's take a look at the projects shortlisted by the national jury. Lane Cove House by Saha. Nightingale Village by Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Breathe, Claire Cousins Architects, Hayball and Kennedy Nolan. Narrabunda House by Envelope Architecture. ANMF House by Bailey Ward. And Bula Katagen by Lions with Silver Thomas Hanley, The Fulcrum Agency and Officer Woods Architects. The jury have awarded a national commendation for sustainable architecture to Saha. Congratulations to the team at Saha and the jury have awarded a national award for sustainable architecture to Bula Katajin by Lions with Silver Thomas Hanley, the Fulcrum Agency and the Officer Woods Architects. With sustainability front and centre of the design, Bula Katajin straddles the two levels with the feel of an oversized timber warehouse for learning. The expressed CLT structure, which gives the building a warm, barn-like feel, reduces the project's overall embodied carbon by 55% compared to equivalent concrete buildings. The project tests some original ideas in environmental and social sustainability. Congratulations Lions with Silver Thomas Hanley, the Fulcrum Agency and Officer Woods Architects. And the highest honour in the category, the David Oppenheim Award for Sustainable Architecture, goes to Nightingale Village by Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Agree, Claire Cousins Architects, Hayball and Kennedy Nolan. Nightingale Village is a testament to the power of collaboration. Their intent was to create a fossil fuel free environment in a central location, providing long-term homes for a diverse community. The result is a playful, lively and clearly much loved series of buildings, each with its own character but sharing a common vision. The success of this project on so many levels can be traced back to the open collaboration between highly skilled individual architecture studios. The development demonstrates the merit of sharing information and the social and environmental benefits of a design that considers more than the residents alone. Congratulations Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Breathe, Claire Cousins Architects, Hayball and Kennedy Nolan. Well, that was easy. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, thank you to this incredible uh, group of architects who risked a lot, a lot to make this happen. Um, thank you to the jury for seeing, you know, uh, sustainability of reductionism, the things that we took out rather than the things we put in. Um, and thank you to our industry. We've got a challenge ahead of us. And I think that this group has proved that you don't need a big budget, you don't need a big client, you can choose to do it yourself. So, thank you. Congratulations to all the teams involved in the project and thank you very much, Shannon. The next categories are educational architecture, urban design and enduring architecture. I'd like to invite national juror Shanine Fanton to say a few words and present the certificates in these three categories. Please make a welcome. Hello everyone, can you see me? The lectern's are always a bit tall. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Auntie Sheridan, who's left, but for her lovely welcome from the Ngunnawal people on the country that we're on tonight. I'd like to thank the Institute, our sponsors, fellow architects and colleagues, and my new friends, fellow jurors. Thrusty, Jenky, 
jungly and bananarama. You know who you are. <laughs> what does it mean to be part of the National Architecture Awards? The title assumes we are a single nation in identity, governance and culture. And it asks us to apply a process of award, awarding exceptional work across the whole of this vast continent. But we are many nations and many peoples. I come from Yidinji country, which is more than three and a half thousand kilometres to the north of here. Climatically, socially and politically, it really feels like another country to where we are tonight. We were only 20% of the yes vote in the electorate I'm in. And for the Yidinji sovereign nation, it is certainly another country. So on our, award, on our awards journey, we visited projects on many different countries each unique in their context, approach and resolution, each offering us an opportunity to listen and learn. What the National Awards process showed me was the diversity, strength and care in architecture that is being created across this place that we call Australia. As a result, I like to think of these awards not as national awards, but as the best work at a moment in time, in place, in context, the most respectful of country, the most promising in sustainability, the most impressive collaborations, and the most active nudging of societal change. Every project entered in the National Architecture Awards is exceptional. You are all winners. You managed to get these projects started and completed, and along the way, you hosted opportunities for learning and change within your city, your community, your profession, and probably your daily practice. Creating and making great places takes a huge commitment by many people working together. Exceptional architecture is hard, and for me, it is about caring. I acknowledge that Sarah Lynn Reese was talking a lot about caring today, and in interestingly, I was writing about caring last night. So for me, it's about caring for country, caring for people, clients and colleagues, and caring for the future and how we want it to be. So all of the entries in the National Awards show an incredible amount of care, passion and diligence. Without care, what is to become of us and our planet? So now, we're going to take a look at the eight projects shortlisted in the Educational Architecture category, and after that, Urban Design and the Enduring Design Award. Thank you. <laughs> Box Hill North Primary School by Sibling Architecture. Research School of Physics Stage 1 Building, Australian National University by Hassel. Centre for Higher Education Studies by Fieldwork plus Brand Architects. Cannon Hill Anglican College D Block by Red Dog Architects in association with Blue Line Architecture. Cranbrook School, Horden Oval Precinct Redevelopment by Architectus. Inveresk Library, University of Tasmania by Wardle. Bula Catagen by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley, The Fulcrum Agency and Officer Woods Architects. And McLeod College by Kennedy Nolan. Thank you very much, uh, Shanine. We've got a lot to get through. And the National Accommodation for Educational Architecture is awarded to Research, Research School of Physics, Stage 1 Building, Australian National University by Hassel. Congratulations. <laughs> Another national commendation for educational architecture goes to Cannon Hill Anglican College D Block by Red Dog Architects in association with Blue Line Architecture. Congratulations. There are two national awards to announce. The first national award for educational architecture is awarded to Inveresk Library, University of Tasmania by Wardle. Inveresk Library is an engaging and playful addition to the University of Tasmania's campus in Launceston. The library's bold aluminium exterior illuminates, creating a veil-like effect that is both enticing and enigmatic. Set over three levels, the library has a dynamic glue limb timber structure with inset acoustic panels. 
The design of the spaces is intentionally flexible and independent of the building rhythm and structure to allow for changes in use and program in the future. Congratulations, Wardle. Congratulations again, and the second national award for educational architecture goes to Cranbrook School Horden Oval Precinct Redevelopment by Architectus. Cranbrook School's Bellevue Hill Campus Redevelopment cleverly offers spaces and services back to the public while integrating new buildings into the existing oval and historic terraces of the site. As it steps up to the site, the section peels back, creating a series of terraces that connect the inside learning areas to views across the oval. The internal spaces, such as the Great Hall and the Music Room, are designed with a level of care rarely seen in school environments and can elevate the aspirations of the students and teachers. Congratulations, Architect Us. Congratulations, Architectus, and finally, the highest honour that can be bestowed in this category, the Daryl Jackson Award for Educational Architecture, goes to Bulak Katajin by Lions of Silver Thomas Hanley, the Fulcrum Agency, Officer Woods, Architecture as well. Bula Katajin is a bold and transformative addition to Murdoch University's Perth campus on Noongar Country. The structure is a 180 metre long bridge that traverses 13 metres in height over three levels. The building section and language nods to the campus buildings designed by eminent Western Australian architect Gus Ferguson, while the structure is a showcase for sustainability. It is the largest mass engineered timber building in Western Australia and embedded with technology optimised for student learning is Six Star Green Star certified. The project successfully integrates its design brief in a solution that is striking, elegant, flexible, inclusive and certainly of its place. Congratulations Lions with Silver Thomas Hanley, the Fulcrum Agency and Officer Woods Architects. As always, thank you to the jury, but um, big thank you to uh, Auntie Violet and her welcome to country. And as a practice, we pay our respects to the Ngunnawal elders, past, present and emerging. Uh, you may wonder what Bula Katajan means as a title for the project. Uh, it's Noongar language for many places of learning and recognising that this site, the project was built on at the Murdoch campus, has been a site for learning for 65,000 years. Uh, so we're absolutely delighted to receive the Education Award. Uh, as you know, as architects, when you work on projects which you know are genuinely transformative, can transform the people that will use the building, in this instance pretty much student culture on their campus, uh, is a fantastic thing as designers to be involved with. So. A uh, big thank you to our project team from Lions. Brian is here with me on stage and many others that were involved in the project. And again, uh, the work we've done with collaborating with other practices, a big shout out to uh, the Fulcrum Agency, Officer Woods and um, Silver Thomas Hanley, who are pretty much with us for three or four years in developing this project. So thank you very much. Thank you very much and congratulations. Our next category tonight is urban design. Let's take a look at the five shortlisted projects. Nightingale Village by Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Breathe, Claire Cousins Architects, Hayball, Kennedy Nolan, Open Work and Andy Fergus. Parliament Square Hobart by FJC Studio. Dairy Road by Craig Tan Architects. University of Melbourne Student Precinct, Lions with Koning Eisenberg Architecture, NMBW Architecture Studio, Greenaway Architects, Architects Eat, Aspect Studios and Glass Urban. And Hurston Quarter Redevelopment Stage 1 and 2 by Hassel. 
Kicking off with a national commendation for urban design, congratulations to Nightingale Village by Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Bree Claire Cousins Architects, Havel Kennedy Nolan Open Work, and Andy, Andy Fergus. Another national commendation for urban design goes to Derry Road, Craig Tan Architects. A national award for urban design is awarded to Hurston Quarter Redevelopment Stage 1 and 2 by Hassel. The Hurston Quarter Redevelopment Stage 1 and 2 successfully navigates a steep complex site containing heritage buildings and remnants of an old quarry entangled with busy roads to the east and south. The project maximises the site's best qualities and draws the public into the precinct and heritage centre. The diversity of uses on the site call for varied entries and permeability for different people. Hurston Quarter has reclaimed a part of Brisbane that has long felt inaccessible and given back to its neighbourhood. Congratulations, Hassel. The highest honour in this category, the Walter Burley Griffin Award for Urban Design, is awarded to University of Melbourne Student Precinct by Lyons and Koning Eisenberg Architecture, NNBW Architecture Studio, Greenway Architects, Architects Eat, Aspect Studio and Glass Urban. The University of Melbourne Student Precinct brings clarity, connection, fun and inclusion to a previously congested area of the Parkville campus. The precinct encompasses six new and refurbished buildings within a landscape that has been returned to its original datum. 45 First Nations language groups were consulted on this project and their voices are present in the spaces created. The student precinct demonstrates the power of collaborative processes across community, the university and the profession to create an exceptional urban design excellence. Congratulations Lions with Koning Eisenberg Architecture, NMBW Architecture Studio, Greenaway Architects, Architects Eat, Aspect Studios and Glass Urban. Well, as always, we'd, we'd really like to thank the jury for, for um, looking at this project and, and uh, giving us this, this great honour. Our fantastic client is a really brave project to do uh, with COVID, student experience and students uh, dropping all over the country. They went ahead with this project anyway. But it's important to note this project, I mean, we talked about a lot about the voice recently. This project was informed by a whole diversity of voices. So Gina, G for Greenaway with Green Shoot Consulting uh, had 40 different language groups inform the design of this project. We had 20,000 student voices through the University of Melbourne informing the outcome. We had seven different design practices informing design. And you can't ask for a better, more fun project than that. And uh, I guess as a culmination of that, um, you know, for future students who will inhabit this precinct, I took my kids along to it who, at the age of 14 and 11, said, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, the highest honour. But um, no, thank you to all our team up here, all our collaborators again. It was a really intense, beautiful project and um, we couldn't have enjoyed it anymore. Congratulations, teams. And before Shanine leaves the stage, we've got one more category to present the Enduring Architecture. This category is for projects of at least 25 years of age, which in a contemporary context remain important as high quality works of architecture. Let's take a look at the four nominees. Sir Charles Kingsford Smith Memorial by Noel Robinson Architects. Olympic Park Station by Hassel. Brambuck, the National Park and Cultural Centre by Gregory Burgess Architects. And The Chancery by Pegram Chowak Architects. And the National Award for Enduring Architecture goes to Brambuck, the National Park and Cultural Centre by Gregory Burgess Architects. <laughs> Completed in 1990 and constructed from local materials, Brambach is embedded in country. Approached via a slow walk past ancient wood canoes, carved trees and a croaking billabong, it crouches low and is surrounded by an endemic garden of medicinal and edible plant. 
Burgess camped on site with countrymen and women to develop the first sketches and concepts with deep engagement and participation from the local Indigenous community, continuing throughout the entire process. Brambuck was awarded the Sir Zelman Cohen Award for Public Architecture in 1990, and it is correct that it should be honoured with the Enduring Architecture Award 33 years on. Congratulations, Gregory Burgess Architects. I accept this award on behalf of the Eastern Ma, Gundajamiring, Berendi Gadjan communities, Parks Victoria, and our team. We thank you. Endurance requires courage, persistence, and imagination. It may also involve long suffering. Our First Nations people have endured 200 years of colonial occupation after their long flourishing here. Brambuck too has endured 33 years since its opening and 40 years since its first seeds. Together with the five communities, the design emerged with the creative trust that comes from goodwill, openness and vulnerability. It was pioneering, it was life-changing. To begin, we camped out together as our first campfire died after feasting and sharing, I retired to my tent and could hear men weeping with anguish. They told stories of self-doubt, racism, neglect, and separation from country and family. There was also dry humour and a sense of enduring together. The building, centred around a huge stone fireplace, is animated by the stories of its communities. It holds in its buckling and lifting, its arcs and its shadows, both the burden of suffering and the energy of hope and transformation. Our buildings, like ourselves and our nation, are works in progress. The language and materiality of architecture can embody our difficult history and help us to reimagine who we can be. After this divisive month, what is asked of us for the future? What is needed so we can listen more deeply, connect, be present to place and people and act with trust and care? Thank you. Congratulations, Gregory, and thank you, uh, Shanine. Uh, and probably a good time for a reminder, if you've got those glasses on the ground, you might want to pass them down to that other end uh, where the uh, golden trays are, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in, an important room that we're in. Our next couple of categories, commercial architecture, small project architecture, and international architecture. Please welcome to the stage juror, uh, national juror, William Smart, to say a few words and present the awards. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Gregory for that incredible acceptance speech and also to Shanine for her great speech earlier today. Um, it's a great honour to be here, to be on the national jury, and because of that I recognise so many faces here tonight. It's an incredible experiment, really, is to throw five people together who don't know each other and to take them to the four corners of the country uh, and to judge architecture at the highest national level. Each one of those jurors has a very different perspective on architecture. The questions we asked ourselves are things like, what was the sustainability credentials for the project? How did the project engage with country? Was the project innovative? How did people manage the budget? Was there mastery in the work? And did they really get to the place that they aimed to get to with the projects? And what surprised me from those different perspectives 
is how we all reached unity and we all had a very strong collective opinion of what made great architecture. And for all of us, we were looking for the projects that shone out, that had exceptional beauty. And of course, there was great debate and some projects took many days to reach to a conclusion. But they, they uh, were, were exceptional and I'd also like to acknowledge that every one of the entries that we saw were also exceptional. And the work we saw was incredibly diverse. So I'd like to, 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 to now go to the, to the shortlisting and look at the 10 selected projects to the commercial architecture category. Brindabella by Bates Smart. Poly Centre, 210 George Street by Grimshaw. Heritage Lanes, 80 Ann Street by Woods Baggett. Parliament Square Hobart by FJC Studio. JCB Studio by Jackson Clements Burrows. Larrakia Norforce by BVN. Monato Safari Park Visitor Centre by Intro with Studio Graham. Delatite Cellar Door by Lucy Clementer Architects. QVS Stafford Vet Hospital by Vokes and Peters. And Yuranma Plates by SJB. And a national commendation for commercial architecture is awarded to Yuranma Place by SJB. <laughs> And the jury have also awarded a national commendation for commercial architecture to Poly Centre 210 George Street by Grimshaw. <laughs> and a national award for commercial architecture goes to JCB Studios by Jackson Clements Burrows. Extraordinarily low budget, this existing warehouse has been adapted to create an architect's dream studio that complements its urban context. Designed for reuse and disassembly is highly considered. Raw materials including galvanised sheeting, plywood, linoleum and unfinished LVL beams proudly stamped with their details are harmoniously combined to create a warm gutsy interior filled with energy and light. This is a thoroughly rigorous project that never fails to consider its robustness, commodity or ability to delight. Congratulations, Jackson Clements Burrows. Congratulations again. And the highest honour in this category, the Harry Seidler Award for Commercial Architecture, goes to Delatite Cellar Door by Lucy Clemenger Architects. A set of wide processional stairs leads to a monolithic building on top of a ridge at Delatite, a winery in the foothills of the Victorian Alps. But the Delatite Cellar Door has a kind of architectural alchemy. The building feels grand until you get close, when it becomes something more human-scaled and welcoming. Although it feels substantial, its footprint is relatively small. And although made from modest materials, it feels precious. Altogether, it forms something that is greater than the sum of its parts. It's the perfect union of place, product, architecture and owners. Congratulations, Lucy Clemenger Architects. Wow, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much to the Institute. Thank you so much to the jury for coming all that way. We absolutely love showing you the project. It was such a shocking day in the rain. Um, congratulations to everyone on this incredible shortlist. Um, this is such an incredible honour for our very small practice. Uh, we were very, very fortunate to work for clients who are absolutely committed to sustainability um, and uh, through their... Uh, uh, wine production and farming practices and they were just dream clients so we were actually very very lucky architects and uh, it was a great team and thank you very much thank you thank you very much
Congratulations to Lucy and, Lucy and the team. Next up is the small project architecture. Let's see the five shortlisted projects. Moonavale Beach Amenities and Lifeguard Facility by Warren and Mahoney. Dimensions X Farm Stay by Peter Stutchbury Architecture. University of Queensland Cricket Club Maintenance Shed by Lineberg Wang and Steve Hunt Architect. Victorian Family Violence Memorial by Muir Plus Open Work. And Postal Hall by Trower Falvo Architects. Let's get into it. A national commendation for small project architecture is awarded to Dimensions X Farm Stay by Peter Stutchbury Architecture. Congratulations. <laughs> Another national commendation for small project architecture goes to Postal Hall by Trower Falvo Architects. Congratulations to the team. A national award for small project architecture is awarded to University of Queensland Cricket Club Maintenance Shed by Lineberg Wang with Steve Hunt Architects. The Victorian Family Violence Memorial. The University of Queensland Cricket Club Maintenance Shed is ornamented with the reimagined possibilities of the humble masonry block. The outcome is a pavilion that sits proudly in the landscape, situating itself as a beacon for the local university and cricket community. One of the hallmarks of good design is the ability to take a rudimentary material and achieve texture, embellishment, detail and structure all in one. This shed is a wonderful example of this dexterity displayed in a delightful way. Congratulations Lineberg Wang and Steve Hunt Architect. Congratulations again, and a national award for small project architecture is awarded to University of Queensland Cricket Club. Main, no, that's my, my mistake this time. <laughs> that was to see if you were paying attention. And the highest honour, the Nicholas Merkett Award for Small Project Architecture, goes to the Victorian Family Violence Memorial by Muir Plus Open Work. The Victorian Family Violence Memorial is a gentle gesture in solidarity. The monument holds the earth as if to bear the weight of the subject matter, delicately balanced in a moment in time. Steel buttresses appear to vanish into a point of darkness, their pared back filigree personifying the immeasurable number of victims. A poetic expression of what we see and what we don't see, the work manifests a sculptural gracefulness where every touch point has meaning. With elegant simplicity, this monument holds space as a place to be still and to remember. Congratulations, Muir Plus Open Work. Um, thank you very much for the, uh, to the jury. It's an incredible honour. Uh, to be winning this award this evening and um, this project was a pure uh, collaboration. There are many, many people that this award goes to and um, I'd like to thank in particular uh, Sky Haldane from City of Melbourne, Sally Hassler from the Office of Women um, and Department and Premier Cabinet, um, Russell and Jennifer who were our victim survivors um, advocates and extraordinary, extraordinary people to work with. Um, uh, we've also got Sarah Lynn Reese in the room here this evening, who we loved working with, who is our Indigenous advisor, and Phil Gardner from WSP, um, uh, an incredible structural engineer. Um, I think Mark and I, uh, one of the things that I think uh, is incredibly important to remember is that this project is a memorial in motion. It is something that unfortunately defines that family violence does not discriminate. It touches absolutely every sector of the room that we're sitting in here this evening, the environments that we inhabit. 
And disappointingly and distressingly today, it was announced that we have lost five women in Australia in the last 10 days to domestic violence. So I think just on that note, I think it would be good to remember that um, we all have a responsibility in this world. And um, as Shanine said this evening, caring is what we all need to be doing. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Muir and o Plus Open Work, for that uh, incredible work, and but also that devastating news is utterly heartbreaking. Let's head overseas now and check out the three nominated projects in international architecture. The Park Santa Monica by Koning Eisenberg Architecture. Paris Apartment by Woodmarsh Architecture and the Ritz-Carlton Maldives, Fari Islands by KHA. And I bet the national jury wish that they got to visit uh, <laughs> all of those, maybe next year, though. <laughs> uh, the jury have awarded the Jörn Utzen uh, Award for International Architecture to Paris Apartment by Woodmarsh Architecture. <laughs> Paris Apartment is the respectful yet extraordinary restoration of a 17th century apartment. For Woodmarsh and Paris Apartment's client, this was an opportunity to showcase their appreciation of history, contemporary art and modern architecture. The project is exceptional, not only because it is a beautiful balance between modern and historic design, but because of the design research and management process the architects managed to navigate with the French government from Australia during COVID. By all accounts, the work is celebrated and loved by both the client and the French authorities as a masterpiece of restoration and interior design. Congratulations, Woodmarsh Architecture. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for um, welcoming us tonight to Antiviolet. Thank you so much uh, to the Institute and the jury. This is a wonderful honor um, we are so grateful for. And thank you so much for everyone at the Institute that worked sort of like in the background uh, to make this happen. We are really grateful. Um, thank you so much for our client, Peter, um, such a generous and visionary person. He trusts us pretty much unconditionally, and he basically let us um, design like um, freely like this project without sort of like any pretty much any constraints. Um, we are really grateful for the opportunity uh, to work on such a um, wonderful building. And um, I guess um, thank you so much for our um, local architects in Paris. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without. Uh, their support and their dedication. Um, the project was, uh, the, the works started on site during the COVID pandemic. Uh, we were lucky, we were here in Australia, so we worked remotely and we supervised the works. Um, our partners in Paris uh, worked throughout uh, the pandemic uh, uh, tirelessly um, and quite generously, uh, including all the contractors and they make sure that everything was pretty much uh, perfect. So we're incredibly grateful for their, for their help. And I guess, thank you so much, uh, Randall and Roger, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Like, very, very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations to Woodmarsh Architecture and thank you to William. The next category recognised projects which demonstrate outstanding and innovative use of steel, the Colour Bond Award for Steel Architecture. And I'd like to invite Lucy Carson from Blue Scope to say a few words and to present the certificates to the recipients. Please make her welcome. Thank you, Dan. I'm delighted that Blue Scope is sponsoring the Colourbond Award for Steel Architecture. This long-standing award recognises the exemplification of the innovative use of steel within design. 
Partnerships and collaboration underpin how Bluescope does business. We value our long-standing relationship with the Institute, which has spanned over three decades as a major sponsor of many programs, including the awards. Our lives are enriched by the relationships that we have with the architectural community. As our business continues on its journey to innovate, meet your needs and deliver on our climate action plan, we value your ongoing partnership. I am joined here tonight by the Blue Scope team who have had an informative and enjoyable three days at the conference. We are dedicated to working with you to support you in any way that we can. I would like to acknowledge the strategic vision and hard work of the Institute in de delivering an unforgettable and unprecedented conference. On behalf of Blue Scope, we recognise all nominees and co congratulate the award winners. We will now take a look at the three shortlisted entries in the Colour Bond Award for Architecture. Salilo Springs by Western Architecture Studio. AB House by Office Meiji. And Thomas Dixon Centre by Conrad Gargett. Accommodation in this category has been awarded to Salilo Springs by Western Architecture Studio. Congratulations. <laughs> and the 2023 Colour Bond Award for Steel Architecture goes to AB House Office Meiji. a wonderful balance between embracing the honest use of simple materials and providing modern amenity, AB House is a grown-up fibro beach shack. Faced with a flood-prone site requiring an elevated floor plate, the architect has taken maximum advantage of the benefits of steel to design a graceful lightweight structure that sits confidently above the landscape. Small format corrugated steel is interwoven with corrugated fiberglass, all framed in an exposed galvanised frame. The result is a consistent familiar language that still feels innovative. Congratulations, Office Meiji. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you, uh, obviously, to my business partner, who can't be here today, Millie Anderson. Uh, but uh, as the two of us, we are really thankful to the Institute, uh, the jury members, and obviously Blue Scope Steel. Uh, and given it's a steel award, I should probably thank the steel fabricator or design for their beautiful work. So thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Office Meiji, and thanks very much to Lucy. Well, please put your hands together for National Jurist Scott Birchall, who's going to take us through interior architecture in the first of residential categories. Hmm. Sorry, just one second. Don't you love notes? Okay. Um, when Shannon first approached me to be a juror uh, on the national jury, I didn't actually give it a second thought. Um, it was an extraordinary, I felt it was an extraordinary honour um, and an amazing opportunity to, as a self-confessed archi nerd, um, to travel the country looking at the best projects from 2023 in every category, um, it's kind of a, a dream come true. Um, so thank you, Shannon. Um, we started out in Melbourne uh, with two days of um, deliberations on arriving at the shortlist. Uh, I'd started out thinking we've got this amazingly diverse range of jurors and that that will be an extraordinary thing. By this point, I was starting to wonder that maybe that's not the best opportunity and that, in fact, we're just not going to agree on anything. Um, we whittled the uh, long list down to a short list um, and with a remarkably collegiate approach, um, not that it wasn't with some um, dispute, 
Um, but we, yeah, we, we did get there. Um, and then we, uh, I, at that point, I was still under some naive impression that I could comfortably conduct a business. Um, <laughs> in the downtime between visits, that impression was absolutely gone by the end of day one. Uh, day one was in Brisbane. I'll just give you a quick summary. Day one was in Brisbane. Those who know me will know that I went up the day before and looked at some projects because two weeks of architectural tourism was not going to be enough. Um, but we started at 6.30 for a 7 o'clock for our first visit um, with Abby, um, our saviour, uh, pointing out that, in fact, breakfast at the hotel didn't start till 7, so she was going to bring some danishes and coffees. That day ran from 6.30 till I think our last visit was at 7 p.m. at the airport before getting on a plane to Rockhampton um, for, where we, I think we arrived at the hotel at about 10.30 at night before then the next morning, one visit in Rockhampton before jumping on a light plane out to Winton, which I don't know if you're familiar with this construction terminology, but it's in buttfuck nowhere <laughs> in the middle of Queensland. We then jumped on a flight back to Brisbane to jump on a flight to Darwin to look at one project. Uh, we then had a delayed flight leaving Darwin. Really good oysters at Darwin, Air at Darwin Harbour, if anyone's going for it. Thank you, Steph. And uh, I think we arrived in Melbourne at about a, with a delayed flight, thank you, Virgin, um, at about 11.30 at night for a 6.30 a.m. start the next day. I just want to be clear, if any of you get the opportunity to do this, do it. <laughs> if I'm not making that kind of, if you're not getting that vibe, an extraordinary opportunity with um, a group of four other um, like amazing humans, an extraordinarily collegiate um, process that uh, was robust, there were some very robust discussions. There was no shortage of rigour through the entire process. Um, and we frequently disagreed, but in, a, in this modern day and age, a remarkably respectful process of putting our case as to why we thought some projects really had merit over others. And at the end of the day, um, thank you, National Institute of Architects, we end up in a position where we're judging the interiors of the Sydney Opera House against a $200,000 apartment renovation in Surrey Hills. <laughs> There's a lot going on. <laughs> um, so I know that there's been conversations, architects, when I was announced as being a jury member, and a lot of people a little surprised. Um, architects came to me saying, oh, the National Awards, it's all rubbish, it's all biased, it's this, often from absolutely diametrically opposed arguments that, um, that the interiors, uh, it always goes to the big firms and then the next person saying it always goes to an emerging architect. I can assure you the rigour that went into our process meant that when we got to the final decisions of actually naming awards, um, which was one very long working dinner in Launceston, followed by a working lunch in Adelaide, um, we were unanimous. And I'm really fucking proud of that. <laughs> and on that note, interiors. <laughs>
A national award for interior architecture goes to the Bass Coast Farmhouse by Wardle. Bass Coast Farmhouse unashamedly braces itself against its surroundings, with the interior providing a delightfully warming and welcoming counterpoint. What seems from the outside to be a simple modern interpretation of an Australian shed reveals itself as a complex courtyard house, with the courtyard dropping away alongside the natural slope of the terrain. The house brims with superbly original detail, from custom pieces of furniture to mechanically operated shutters, complete with kinetic motors to exquisitely simple balustrades. Congratulations, Wardle. Congratulations again, Wardle. And the highest honour in this category, the Emile Soderston Award for Interior Architecture, is awarded to Sydney Opera House Concert Hall Renewal by ARM Architecture. Overhauling the interior of the World Heritage listed Sydney Opera House Concert Hall might be considered one of the most daunting briefs of an architect's career. Mechanical interventions in the concert hall, including drop-down acoustic curtains and sound ledges, have been handled with great restraint and the waveform timber acoustic panelling feels perfectly at home. Every possible fragment of original building fabric has been reused. ARM Architecture has managed to perform the most flattering of facelifts for this grand dame. The house feels ready for its next 50 years. Congratulations, ARM Architecture. We've, we've lost our fearless leader, Howard, along the way somewhere. Um, I think when, when, we, uh, when we won the Interior Award in New South Wales, we, we were quite shocked. Um, and I think we remain, um, remain so. Um, but the work in the Opera House, it is an extraordinary place to work. And Peter Hall's work there is now finally being uh, recognised uh, for the heroic piece of work uh, that it is. Uh, and really, there are very, very few better rooms uh, in the world than the concert hall. And it is a great pleasure to have work worked there. Um, even if the, the site itself looked absolutely catastrophic, they were quite terrifying days there. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations again, ARM. We're on the home stretch now. Let's get stuck into the residential architecture categories, starting with multiple housing. Here are the six shortlisted entries. Forest Hall by Kerry Hill Architects. Kerr Street Residences by Kirsten Thompson Architects. Turner Avenue Homes by Push and David Panisi. Nightingale Village by Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Breathe, Claire Cousins Architects, Habel and Kennedy Nolan. Igloo Summer Hill by Bates Smart. And Habitat on Jewers by Refresh Studio for Architecture. And we've got three commendations to begin with. The first national commendation for residential architecture, multi, multiple housing, goes to Forest Hall by Kerry Hill Architects. Congratulations. <laughs> Another national commendation for residential architecture, multiple housing, is awarded to Turner Avenue Homes by Push and David Panisi. Congratulations, teams. The final national commendation for residential architecture, multiple housing goes to Habitat on Dewars by Refresh Studio for Architecture. Congratulations. <laughs> and the highest honour, the Frederick Romberg Award for Residential Architecture, multiple housing, is awarded to Nightingale Village by Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Bree, Claire Cousins Architects, Havel and Kennedy Nolan. The much-awarded Nightingale projects may have their roots in Northern Europe, but they're now very much a part of the local scene. 
A carefully curated group of some of the country's best designers assembled to draw from the hits and misses of the nightingales that have gone before to create an urban village. What the village adds is a heightened sense of community. We will need a variety of typologies to solve our housing crisis and while Nightingale provides one, it lays the groundwork for many more. Congratulations Architecture Architecture, Austin Maynard Architects, Breathe, Claire Cousins Architects, Habel and Kennedy Nolan. Uh, thank you to the jury and the Institute of Architects. Um, we're incredibly proud. It's been a long time getting here, um, and I think we're still exhausted. Uh, I think uh, we, it's a bit like childbirth. I think in two years we'll think it was easy. Um, so, but I just I think the message is um, that we were not just six groups of architects, plus Boala, our, our trusty seventh. Um, we also were the developers, which was the really hard bit. And I think we've developed great... We never had any respect for developers before we did this. We now have a lot more. Um, but I think what's mo most important to us is um, that hopefully that this can be a lesson in what architects can do when they, when they come together. Um, so it's a really um, exciting that uh, this can be a demonstration project, hopefully, about... Um, different modes of housing and how we can have a diverse housing that uh, caters to everyone, given the crisis or the housing challenges that we're having. Um, we have 20% of our apartments were sold to community housing providers and we hope that this is a great lesson for policymakers and government that inclusionary zoning is, should be the way of the future. So thank you very much and thanks to the team. Congratulations, teams, and thank you, Scott. The next two categories round out the residential space, alterations and additions, and new houses. Please welcome National Juror Stephanie Kinnigan to the stage to present the certificates and share a few words. Thank you, Dan, and good evening, everyone. And my sincere thanks to the Institute and our share, Shannon, uh, for granting me the opportunity to sit on this jury on Ngunnawal country uh, to present it to you all. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. As an emerging architect, uh, it feels like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, really, and I am forever grateful. Thank you. OK, picture this. Five architects, complete strangers, as you've known, crammed into a key carnival, Two and a half weeks, fueled by sugar, caffeine, sounds like a recipe for a major conflict. Um, and as a baby jury representative, I embraced the back seat. Um, I expected my lunch to be stolen and uh, my face to be a canvas for when I dared to nap on those big long drives. Um, but to Shannon's credit, her intuition brought us together as a diverse group of people and it fostered candid, humble, curious discussions, um, enhancing our shared journey in the pursuit of architectural excellence. Everyone held the conch, and by the end of the tour, I was the one that ate everyone's lunch. <laughs> we were unrelenting in the insightful deliberations on what constitutes good architecture. Architecture that has a resolution beyond superficial means, architecture whose fundamental ideas permeate down to the core of what makes it outstanding in the realm of the national stage. To all the shortlisted entrants, I extend my heartiest congratulations. Your dedication and creativity has shone brightly, and this moment belongs to each one of you. Australia's architectural calibre is one to be really proud of. Across the residential projects this year, there was a real sense of um, creating space that felt generous to the landscape, an almost effortless dialogue between the nuances of being inside and being outside. And I think that coming off the back of some pretty challenging pandemic times, uh, it felt like a refreshing restoration to this conversation. Referencing the maxims from the lectures in this year's conference, architecture has the capacity to enrich, 
enliven and nourish us, and we should wield this power with generosity. So let's have a look at the six shortlisted entrants for Resi Architecture Alton Ads. Armadale House by Neeson Merkett Neal. Lane Cove House by Saha. North Perth House by Simon Pendle Architect. Sunday by Architecture Architecture. Harriet's House by SO Architecture. And Balmain House by Saha. A national commendation for residential architecture alterations and additions goes to Harriet's House by SO Architecture. Congratulations. <laughs> Another national commendation for residential architecture alterations and addition goes to North Perth House by Simon Pendle Architect. Congratulations, Simon Pendle Architect. <laughs> A national award for residential architecture alterations and additions is awarded to Belmain House by Saha. Balmain House is an example of a carefully considered residential extension to a tired existing dwelling. Saha has reused the existing cottage and dovetailed it into the new addition with impeccable clarity. Sliding doors peel back to expose and blur boundaries between interior and exterior, further distinguishing the garden as a central feature of the space. Where some additions can feel like an abrasive adjunct to their existing context, Balmain House manages to weave a distinct contemporary aesthetic into the traditional cottage vernacular with ease. Congratulations, Saha. Congratulations, Saha. And the highest honour in this category, the Eleanor Colours Hill Award for Residential Architecture, Alterations and Additions, goes to Sunday by Architecture Architecture. <laughs> On entering the sweet, unassuming house, you are instantly aware that this home is something different. Even on a wet and wintry day, light, texture and material warmth draw you in. With space enough for two, the dwelling offers a delicate intimacy where the rituals of daily life are celebrated. Everywhere you look, there is something to delight. When the urge to gather presents, the house easily welcomes guests with spaces showing a delightful ability to adapt and flex. You can easily imagine long summer evenings there with windows and doors flung open and the sound of merriment floating between the rooms. Congratulations, architecture, architecture. Wow, thank you, this is a, a huge honor. Um, and very humbling considering the, the strength of the category um, across Australia, really. This is where so many architects cut their teeth and, yeah, to somehow simmer to the top is incredible and it's uh, fortunately justified wearing these ridiculous yellow ties. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, got to thank the clients, uh, amazing clients, um, Virginia and Sophie, you know, their DNAs through, through this project. Um, the builder with our favourite name, Tom Petty, uh, he, he's amazing. Uh, we've done a couple of projects with him now. Um, project architect extraordinaire, Angus Hamilton, who you know, you know, really does the hard work, uh, the, all the day-to-day -day on this project. Um, the jury, uh, very well judged. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, really want to thank, um, you know, Mike's my business partner, um, really want to thank Mike and, but particularly our team back in, we call them a family, really, family at AA. Um, you know, Mike and I do a few squiggles, and, but they really do all the hard work. They do everything. They sweat blood, blood, sweat and tears on every project. Um, we love them all. We lo it's an honour to, to work with them every day. So, yeah, big shout out to the team back in Melbourne. Thank you. Congratulations, Architecture Architecture. And now for Residential Architecture Houses New. Let's have a look at the seven projects shortlisted by the National Jury. 
Block Stafford Heights by Block Modular with Vokes and Peters. Merrick's Farmhouse by Michael Lumby with Nielsen Jenkins. Mossy Point House by Addition Office. Triptych by Room 11 Architects. 19 Waterloo Street by SJB. Spring Creek Road Farmhouse by Architect Brew Kosh. And Salilo Springs by Western Architecture Studio. A national commendation for residential architecture houses new is awarded to Mossy Point House by Addition Office. Congratulations, Addition Office. <laughs> the first national award for residential architecture houses new goes to Merrick's Farmhouse by Michael Lumby with Nielsen Jenkins. Merrick's Farmhouse offers a different take on the rural shed vernacular. Nestling into the slope, the house's long, low glazing is almost invisible beneath the deep eaves. Extending out into the garden, the concrete walls topped in succulents are reminiscent of a moss-covered ruin. The entry sequence takes you into a large sheltered courtyard, but rather than a rectangle of manicured garden, you find a pond with giant stepping stones leading you through superb native plantings. The landscaping flows in and out, blurring the boundaries at every turn. Congratulations, Michael Lumby with Nielsen Jenkins. The second national award for residential architecture houses new is awarded to Spring Creek Road Farm House by architect Brew Koch. Tucked in among working farmland, Spring Creek Road Farmhouse looks from a distance like a piece of farm infrastructure. But as you get closer, it becomes apparent that something else entirely is at play. Sitting on a modest off-grid footprint, it is a lesson in providing just enough. Just enough space, just enough comfort, just enough light, and with its carefully curated views, just enough aspect. This calm and beautifully simple house represents a triumph of economy of materials and finishes. Congratulations, architect Brew Kosh. And the highest honour in this category, the Robin Boyd Award for Residential Architecture Houses New, is awarded to Waterloo Street by SJB. 19 Waterloo Street is a spectacular example of a new approach to urban in Bill. From the moment it comes into view, the home announces itself as something different. Full of colour, the facade disguises the program within, allowing an element of privacy balanced by a sense of generosity to the public street. All the required elements of home are present, with each opening off the central stair. Entry, workspace, kitchen, living and bedroom all have their own character and charm. The construction was powered by solar panels on the adjoining building, and the chosen materials include those rejected by others as imperfect. The final building presents a space full of joy and life that provides its inhabitants with the ultimate in efficient, healthy housing. Congratulations, SJB. Um, thank you. I'm really, actually really overwhelmed, to be honest. Um, I want to say, in a month that has had a lot of sadness, um, what a remarkable thing it is to be a part of this profession um, who are forward-thinking and um, just generous. So thank you all for being part of the profession. Um, I grew up in country Victoria and I was just thinking, watching tonight, that um, when I was at high school, Brambuck was opened and I rode my bike from Ararat to Halls Gap to look at it. That's a fucking long way, can I just tell you? <laughs> um, and the first model I made when I went to university was a model of a house by Edmund and Corrigan. So, um, I didn't know anything about architecture when I went to university, but to uh, make a model about that house is kind of really uh, amazing. So it's just a remarkable thing. I want to thank the Institute. I think there's a lot of awards um, in the world, but actually to have an awards program that um, you visit it and you actually see it and you feel it is a really remarkable thing. So I want to thank the Institute for that. I also want to thank the team, um, Stuart in particular, 
who worked tirelessly on the project, um, the builders, um, Mick and Joe, the, the bricklayers, Stephen. I mean, uh, it was just a really joyful project. I want to thank my husband, who's not here tonight, um, but I also want to thank him for um, getting on the phone tonight and getting my parents, who are in their 80s, onto the live stream, and that deserves a private in itself. <laughs> um, Um, but more than anything, I just want to thank uh, everyone at the office. We have a really amazing group of people at SJB, so thank you all. Congratulations, SJB. Thanks to Jury Ste Jura Stephanie and hello to mum and dad uh, who are watching along online. Moving on to our final category, Public Architecture and the prestigious Zoman Cowan Award. Please welcome back to the stage National Jury Chair Shannon Patterson. And while Shannon's joining us, let's have a look at the nine projects shortlisted by the jury in the category of Public Architecture. Warrnambool Library and Learning Centre by Kosloff Architecture. Thomas Dixon Centre by Conrad Gargett. Melbourne Holocaust Museum by Kirsten Thompson Architects. Rockhampton Museum of Art by Conrad Gargett, Claire Design, Lead Design Architects and Brian Hooper Architect. Dove Lake Viewing Shelter by Cumula Studio. Art Gallery of New South Wales, Sydney Modern Building by Lead Consultants, Sana and Executive Architect, Architect Us. Dynamic Destination Project by Cox Architecture plus Cultivar Architecture. Bendigo Law Courts by Wardle. And Bondi Pavilion Restoration and Conservation by Tonkin Zuleika Greer Architects. A national commendation for public architecture goes to Bendigo Law Courts by Wardle. Congratulations. <laughs> Another national commendation for public architecture goes to the Dove Lake Viewing Shorter by Cumulus Studio. Congratulations. <laughs> the first national award for public architecture is awarded to the Melbourne Holocaust Museum by Kirsten Thompson Architects. A Holocaust's museum content is sensitive and the building's design must be approached in the right way. Here, the method is one of absolute consistency, from the strong cohesive urban form to the exhibition spaces and their connecting circulation areas. The street facade is made from glass and clay bricks woven together, expressing the functions within and culminating in a large lantern. From outside to within, this building is perfectly positioned as a sophisticated and appropriate place to tell the stories of the Jewish community. Congratulations, Kirsten Thompson Architects. Congratulations again to the team at Kirsten Thompson Architects. The second national award for public architecture goes to the Art Gallery of New South Wales, Sydney Modern Building by lead consultant Sana, executive architect, Architectus. Sydney Modern at the Art Gallery of New South Wales is both simple and complex. As you move into and through the building, its spatial complexity and unconventionality become evident. Floors and ceilings sweep and fall, revealing views to the park and the harbour, as well as other parts of the building. The journey is non-linear and invites the visitor to explore the spaces in between as well as the galleries themselves. Light, open and inviting, the Sydney Modern Building masters the art of spatial complexity with calmness. It will no doubt get even better with time as it nestles into its extraordinary landscape setting. Congratulations Lead Consultant Sana and Executive Architect Architectus. Congratulations, Sana and Architectus. And now it's over to you, Shannon, for the final announcement, the big one of the night. I actually forgot I had anything else to say. I was thinking, I'm done. It is with very, very great honour that the Sir Zelman Cohen Award for Public Architecture be awarded to the Rockhampton Museum of Art. <laughs> Thank you.
The Rockhampton Museum of Art is founded on principles of sustainability, public engagement, respect for heritage and international standard gallery spaces. It's true public building, giving back to Rockhampton much more than might be expected from a gallery. The tall column-free exhibition spaces are flexible, independently accessed and engineered to attract international exhibitions as well as showcasing creative works by the local community. Externally, the building is defined by slender bronze columns and local rough sawn stone. This stone, together with the building's confident form, complements Rockhampton's historic architecture. The design is contemporary, refined and elegant, with a beautiful simplicity both inside and out. Well loved by the community, the museum is bringing immeasurable cultural and economic benefits to Rockhampton. Congratulations Conrad Gargett, Claire Design, Lead Design Architects and Brian Hooper Architect. Well, wow, it's very bright up here. Um, thank you so much for a great surprise and such an amazing array of buildings. Um, everyone's been talking about journeys and this journey started off with us being asked to look at a 1970s office block next to the amazing Heritage Lucid Customs House. And of course, when we looked at the office block for the brief, it really wasn't going to work with all of the loadings and security and stuff that an art gallery needs. So we convinced the council to buy the block of land next door. And then, uh, of course, that expanded the brief. But we did manage to bring it in on budget. So uh, that was an amazing uh, journey, I suppose. And all the way through, um, we've had the amazing support of Conrad Gargett and Brian Hooper, uh, the, obviously people in the council, and the building contractor, Woolham Constructions, was uh, amazing. Um, and of course, um, Kerry, my wife and partner, led the team with um, all of these wonderful people here. So uh, thanks very much to the jury, and um, wow, thank you. I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything, but... Yeah, look, just to, to add, um, obviously, uh, yeah, thank you to the AAA and the jury. What an incredible honour. It's truly humbling. But I, I guess I wanted to um, acknowledge Lindsay and Kerry for their amazing design leadership um, on this project and for being really amazing collaborators. Um, you know, you both immerse yourself, you know, in the office, um, in the practice, so... You know, thank you for being, you know, true <laughs> collaborators. Um, but just really want to call out, um, you know, this amazing team. Um, you know, the leadership in terms of, you know, project leadership of um, David Oliver um, and Ed Armstrong coming through on site. Um, uh, obviously, the well, the amazing Luke, <laughs> who, um, you know, for his incredible leadership in terms of documentation, um, despite the fact that um, we were slightly marginalised um, during construction support, um, you know, Luke's documentation, you know, really um, shone through. Um, and, of course, our local support on the ground to, to um, Brian Hooper. But I also should mention our client. Um, uh, I think projects like this really don't happen without having incredible champions. Um, and there were so many of them, you know, on this project. I think the Mayor... Margaret Strello, who really, you know, put herself, um, you know, at a political level, was such a great advocate for the project. Um, and Bianca. Bianca Simovic, of course, who, um, you know, really led in terms of the business case uh, and, um, you know, the development of the brief. Um, and the project manager, um, Andrew Collins, I think, as well. But I guess um, I just want to say that, um, you know, I guess on behalf of the team, we're also really proud to have delivered this project for the Rockhampton community. I think um, Rockhampton now has a gallery, you know, really worthy um, of its amazing permanent collection. Um, and also, I think this was, you know, such a city-making um, project for all of us in terms of um, really how this project, you know, embedded into the um, the, the cultural precinct and the, 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 the fabric of Rockhampton itself. So thank you. Um, three quick words, yabba dabba do, guys, and have a good night. <laughs> Congratulations again, team, and thank you very much, Shannon. 
Uh, and that brings the 2023 National Architecture Awards to a close. Uh, it's my great pleasure to congratulate all the winning practices this evening, your clients and collaborators and everyone involved in these exceptional projects. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you again to our uh, national corporate partners, Bluescope, Torbmans, Smeg, Julux, Allspec, Brickworks, Bondor Matechno, Lysart, Fielders, Modex, Planned Cover, Architecture Media and the Images Makers Association. Please give all of the sponsors a round of applause. And don't forget to collect your complimentary copies of Architecture Australia and Wish magazine. They'll be available outside where food and drinks are about to be served. A special shout out to the sweetest people here, Bondor Matechno, who are your dessert sponsors. Make sure to check out the dessert bar a little later on. We hope you enjoy tonight's music provided by the Canberra Symphony Orchestra String Quartet. If you've had a glass, before you get up, please make sure to grab it and pop it on one of the, uh, the golden trays on the way out. Uh, it's been my absolute pleasure to be your host tonight and across the last couple of days. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. <laughs>
Now you can easily bring your projects to life with Dulux BIM Solutions. Dulux BIM Solutions provides easy to use BIM content, so you can add Dulux colors and product ranges to your Revit and ArchiCAD models quickly and simply. The latest Dulux BIM content update now includes the Dulux World of Color and product ranges from Dulux Powder Coatings, Dulux Protective Coatings, Dulux Acrotex, Dulux Avista and Intergrain Timber Finishes. Dulux BIM Solutions, inspiring creativity. An award-winning Tasmanian winery has rethought the Salador experience with the aid of a carbon-neutral brick. The material palette was selected to respond to the way that Lou and Joe make their wine, which they're all about being as natural and being as authentic as possible. When we were picking materials, we wanted that and a response to the Tasmanian context and a way to sort of ground a small building in the landscape. Aesthetic, ergonomic, flexible, durable, supporting the finest design. The Modex system of modular handrails is guaranteed to be fit for purpose compliant. Time after time after time.
approach to see if we could help Dave and Barbara with their new home. It was an immediate yes. Being part of the community is stitched into Taubman's DNA and we'll do what we can where we can to help. Dave and Barbara have fostered 400 children in the last 27 years, so we obviously needed a really robust product. We used Torbman's Endure, which is a water-based, low VOC product that has been approved by the National Asthma Council of Australia's Sensitive Choices Programme.